I read in your hearing, you just follow. Luke 15, 17 to 21. And when he came to himself, uh -huh. he said, Oh, many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat yes. and to spear, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father's house, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. May me as one of thy hired servant. And and he arose and came to his father. But when his father saw him afar off. He had compassion on him and run and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am not worthy to be called thy son. Amen. He may be seated. And it, 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 it challenged me today because when I look at the worship and I see everyone is worshiping and giving God thanks, I begin to now to, to wrestle within my spirit and I'll be challenged and I'm saying, God, your people are, are all right. Everyone look like they are fine and they're worshiping. Then, then where uh, this word will fit in? Now, why are you give me this word now to, to, to come bring cloud in their sunny day? Why is it? And it, it troubles me, and I sit down, and sometimes I try to close out, but but something is is not as it's supposed to be. The word today is, it's going on time. It's going on time. And a text like this, we know that it is speaking about a physical situation. That it is time to go on. And I want to say to you that if you have not fix yourself physically, then it makes no sense you view Beulah land. Because Beulah land is not a place where we're going to go to get ready. Beulah land is a place where you must be ready to go. Somehow I'm envisioning in my mind, trying to create a picture like when we, we go to the airport. Yeah. Every one of us here know what it is to travel on an airline. And if not, you know what it is to travel on public transport. Yeah. And I've learned over here in the United States that you have to be on time to catch the bus. So sometimes though the bus may delay, it don't mean it is not coming. So sometimes we believe that God is delaying, but he's on his way. We think that when things delay, it, it is not coming anymore. But we have to make sure that when the bus show up, we are ready. We have to make sure that, that when the time is right and he plays in his appearance, he's ready. And now we look at the text and we're looking at the text and this is Jesus speaking now. And, and when Jesus speaks, we need to pay attention. So the Bible said a certain man had two sons. And, and when I look at it, I realize these were two sons that were Christians or two sons that came to church. Yeah? So, so they understood what it is to come to church. They know the principles of God because they were taught in the right man. But the Bible said that this the younger son said to his father, he 
said, give me the portion that fallen to me. And the Bible said his father divide his living. And I look at it now. Uh, we're talking before we go forth. It never said the elder son, it said the younger one. Said, give me. You know, if you understand the principles of the Jew, they should not ask their father for anything. Because the moment they ask him, they're saying, Father, it's time for you to die so we can get what is rightfully yours. And I realize that some of the time our behavior is not right in the presence of God. Sometimes our behavior is not right in the things that we do. Oh God, give me the strength to preach this word today without amen and without hallelujah. So, 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 sometime our attitude is not right because he said, Father, give me. The word that he speaks is like he put down something and he's taking it back. So the way how we approach sometimes the things of God is not with the right mindset. The way how we speak about the men of God is not the right thing. The way how we speak about our brother and our sister, we are not speaking in the right context. So he said, Father, give me the portion that fallen unto me. And when I like, the Father did not curse nor fuss. The Bible said he divided his living. So can I say to you that God will not stop you from doing what you want to do. Uh, don't think that God will come and drape you up to say, do the right thing. He said, go on, go on. Because I set before you to rose. So you choose this day. And when, when, when Joshua understood it, he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So I am not here today to tell anyone that you must serve Jesus. I'm just saying to you what God says. So the Bible said that, 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 that the son said, Father, give me, because it is time for me to go forward. I don't know if one of the times when you were growing up, you said, I want to get big, I want to get big. I can't wait to be on my own. And when you get on your own, you said, Jesus Christ, I wish I was going to school again, because I never know that thing was so hard. And, and so it is that some of the times we, we do things and when the consequences come, we can't manage the consequences. We do things because we are big. Because in church today, oh, can I preach? In, in, in church today, there, there is no child mentality. Jesus said, except he be converted and be as a little children, you can and enter into the kingdom. But we see no one that have that childlike mentality. Everyone is their own big man and big woman. We are quick to tell you, do you know how old I am? Or I am too old for this. Or you don't understand who I am. But we need to be converted. So though he was the littlest one, his attitude was bigger than even the father. And some of us have some attitude that not even Jesus can talk to us. How oh, can I say it? And that's the reason why I don't force people. Because if Jesus can talk to you, then who, then who am I? Then who am I to say anything? If God leave you alone, why should I think? you up and bring you with me. Sometimes we put ourselves in a dangerous position and we don't understand that when we speak against oh, the people of God, we are speaking against God. Jesus said it is better for you if you touch one of the little ones that believe in me. It's better you just go down where the bridge is in Brooklyn 
and just jump up and tie something that it sink you and you don't come up because you don't understand how precious the people of God are to God and sometimes we don't treat our preaching with the respect that they deserve sometimes we don't treat them with the respect that they deserve because we don't value them but you want people to value who you are Mm. Uh, only respect me but I don't respect anyone else uh, but the Bible said it I hear it all the goes uh, he said if you can't love who you can see then, then you just leave me alone because you can't see me oh God almighty so if you can't love me you can't see then Jesus said you better you leave me alone because notice now the Bible said in the image of man that God was man created so when you hate your brother you're saying Jesus I don't like you you don't understand what is going on when you but mind your brother Jesus said you're saying something about me so if you want to show that you love God love your brother if you want to show that you respect God, love and respect your brother. Oh, Jesus, help me today. And many of times I hear people say in church, this relationship is between me and my God. But Jesus said, no, it's between you and your brother and God. So some of us take out God, uh, our brother, out of the picture and say, it is me and God. But Jesus said, it's a triangular relationship. He said, God at the top, your brother here, and you over there connected to God. So, 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 so this self mentality that, 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 that I can do it he said no that's not how it goes so the bible said that the young one had the worst attitude and, and let me say this now because I've been in church and sometimes when I hear people preach and leaders preach them say the young people now be of themselves can I tell you that all people now be of themselves in a church you, you will not say amen for that, but glory to God. Can I say that there are hell of the people in church that don't know how to be of themselves? All they can tell you, I'm in church almost years, you still can't be of yourself. But you don't tell us how long you are here because you still can't be of yourself. Ten years, you can't be of yourself. Twenty years. You can't be of yourself. Some of you said I was born in church. And you still can't be of yourself. Jesus help me today. So, so, so is not only young people giving trouble. If pastor to tell you who is giving him headache, you will be surprised in here today. Uh, you will talk that that person or those person should know better. So, so he, he said that, 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 that the boy, he, 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 he took everything that he had. Because one thing I realized, oh, is it that he just asked. And when he got it, he did not wait to leave. Because there was something outside that was attracting him even when he was there. And many of times when you see people fall away from the feet, it's not something that happened overnight. Some of them have been playing with the devil. Oh uh, yes, oh yes. Some of them have been playing with some things uh, that they're not supposed to be playing with. And when it got fully all on them, oh uh, Jesus Christ, that's when they leave. God is saying, he said, the devil is like the sea. You can put something on the shore. I don't know if you ever go to beach and the wave is coming and you're booming and you're booming. And over a period of time when the woman comes down, you realize that the water reach here. You have to start go back. So it is that sometimes you are there enjoying yourself with things that you know you are not supposed to enjoy yourself with. And when you realize it is too late, there is no turning back. And that's how many people drown at sea. Yeah, because they're having 
came from was something that is dangerous and they are not conscious that any minute they can lose control and destroy themselves. So, so you need to understand Paul said all things are lawful but all things are not expedient and I will not be brought under the power of God you have to know as a child of God it's not everything you go do you see other person that said them a Christian go with you let them go but you don't go with them Because, let me tell you something. Let me stick up in and digress a bit. If you follow some Christians, they will lead you straight to hell. Uh, maybe they're not Christian. Let me say church go. If you follow some people that is going to church, you go straight to hell with them. Because remember the young prophet and the old prophet. The young prophet got the word from God. But he let the old prophet said, I am also a prophet. Faith. And the Lord says this to me. Do you know some people said the Lord said and the Lord never speak a word to them. Why do you think you have so much church now? Because many said the Lord said and the Lord never say a thing in their ears. It's only what they think the Lord says. Or what they feel the Lord says. No, 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 no. Because you're feeling the Holy Ghost, meaning you're fit to be a leader, not because you can speak in tongues, meaning you can cast out devils, and that's why many persons get licked from the devil, because they don't know what they are anointed for. Many a person don't know what they're not anointed for. And that's the reason why sometimes I would sit in church. And no matter what is going on, I don't go forward. Because when you have not received the unction, you can't function. Um, you can't function where God does not give you the unction. So the Bible said that this young man, after he got the cause he said I'm going out because something attractive and can I say to you that if there is something outside that is pulling you is because there is something within that is connected to it because listen now yes sin is connected to sin and there look the Bible said that the devil come Jesus said that the devil come but he find nothing in me what Jesus is saying there is no connection for the devil in me. So when you find something pulling you, it means that there is something for the devil in you. It don't matter if it is something little, it's still a legal ground. Or sometimes we look at sin and say that is sympathy. Because church now classifies sin. If I am a fornicator, the church write me off. But some people that think that they are a I think they're still better than me. said in Revelation it said all liars that's why I don't tell joke with lie you see this storm fool the way I trick people I don't tell joke for lie because the devil has some sort of way to say pastor is waiting for you when you go down at church pastor is not there then you call him baby make a storm fool uh, that's a devil's lie so the devil is so subtle that he presents sin in a playful way that he could draw out a young man that was grown in the principles of God because he was not sober, he was not vigilant and because he don't understand his adversary the devil. I think it was maybe a few months ago I did a study on the devil and people said why is it that you're studying the devil? But if if you have an opponent, you need to know how we function. When the box 
adversaries are going up against an opponent. They sit down and they watch all their strategy, all their attack. When, when they put up their gloves and they do this. So when they go, they will know where to eat them. So the devil is studying you. But you are not studying the wiles of the devil. We need to study the wiles of the devil. So the, 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 but the Bible said that the young man, not many days. So after he got it and he back of himself, he never said in the word that he told his father goodbye. He never said anything to anyone. Because I am a big person. And we are a part of a body. And you are not showing up to church today. The least you can do is call the pastor. Call somebody. To say, let them know I'm not going to be here today. But to say, if I don't come, that, that's okay. No, I mean, I'm, they can't do anything to me. And when you don't call and you show up the other week, you want to come up and take my to sing, preach, or do something, you need to sit down. sit down. Learn to behave yourself. If you don't have any respect, you sit down and behave yourself. Because this is the house of God that is governed by the principles of God. God said, them that honor me I will honor. And those that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. It means the same way how you treat God, he will treat you. Yes. So, so you, you call me, you, you don't call and tell anyone, but when you come, you want to take the mic to sin. I should have me and the pastor in the Holy Ghost. I tell them to sit down. I don't mind if you want to blue, black, purple, and vex it me. You have to vex it the principles of God. Jesus, that's where the church need to go. Let people vex for the right things. More than you tolerate them with the wrong things and sending them and yourself to hell. Because if I am wrong and you are tolerating me, you are sending me to hell and you are coming with me. So when you correct somebody, it's a good that you're doing for them. So the Bible said that not many days after the younger son gathered all, that he had took his journey into a far country. Because what the devil does when he separates you, and when he gets you, he separates you, and he wants to place you at a place where you not see anybody that you know that used to come to church because he don't want them to invite you or to ask you. Many of time people change their number or when they see the number calling the phone and said, oh, a pastor is a missionary is and they leave it to ring. Because you don't understand that the devil divide to conquer. The devil have the strategy just like a lion. So he, he looks for the weakest thing and any other. So the Bible said he had all that he had and he took his journey into a foreign country and there waste his substance to write his living. So he began to smoke, he began to drink, he began to party, uh, forgotten who he was. But that's not a problem. It's a person that is in church and still carrying on with what they want to do. That's a problem that God has. Because when you leave, you're making your intentions clear. But when you sit here and do what you want to do, then you're confusing somebody outside. Amen. 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 He said, waste is substance where it is living. So he was in a far country. He separated himself from the principles of God. And can I say to you that, that you can be sitting here today and still be in a far country? Oh yes, oh yes. Because if you're not in a God, you are in a far country. Because when 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 when, when Cain sin and the Lord put a mark upon him, mm -hmm. 
The Bible said he dwell in the land of Nod. And the word Nod in the Hebrew means nowhere. So if you are not in God, you are no nowhere, nowhere. So if you are not in God, you are nowhere. If you are not in God, you are nothing. It don't matter what you think you are. It don't matter who you think you are. But if you are not in God, you are nothing. So the Bible said, he, and he spent all that he have, and the devil has a way of the coming. So the Bible said, and when he had spent all that he had, there arose a famine in that land, because the devil waits until there is nothing that you can do to defend yourself. He waits till you let your guard down. So when you come out of church and you backslide, and you say, look at the things is better for me than when I was in the church, the devil is just feeding you and luring you to the place where he can begin to attack you and take you out. Now I'm wondering, why am I preaching like this? Because, because everyone here is, is, is part of the same people. So what it is, God, God is trying to say that somebody is playing with something that they're not supposed to play with. Somebody sitting somewhere and they think it is a good place. But you're sitting in a dangerous seat. You're playing with a dangerous seat game with the enemy. You're playing a dangerous game. So the Bible said, and there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. Notice now, the famine arose in the land that he went. But there was no famine where he was coming from. Oh, some of you left, leave the best for less. Because the devil has a way out to blind you and to make you be like Lot. And you see the land of Sodom and Gomorrah more fruitful than the promise of God. And sometimes you look at some things and think that it is better than the church. Sometimes you look at some people and say they are better than the people that are serving God. We look at things and we say that that is better because these people look more fat and flourishing. But the Bible said the famine was where he was. Where he was coming from was all right. And sometimes where you was was all right. But because you have an attitude problem with yourself, you think people have problem with you. Let me preach here now and talk. Can I say to you that when you are a problem, problematic person you will have problem with everyone else or well, when there's something wrong with you you will think that something is wrong with somebody else I was speaking to a preacher, a pastor, a bishop. I said to him, there is two difference between problem people that have a problem and people that is a problem. I say to him, I rather deal with the people that have a problem than the people that is a problem. Because the people that is a problem, you can't change them if they can't see themselves. But the person that has a problem, you can deal with them. But the one that, that, that is a problem, everything is a problem. You ever, you ever hear some people talking when they sit down and they reason with you? Everything in the world is a problem. Even the very breeze that blew on them is a problem. Even the sun that shines is a problem. Even the rain that falls is a problem. But they have not stopped to say, maybe, maybe, just maybe, there's a problem in me. Everything is a problem. Can I say to you that if you have a bad mind, you can't see the good mind in somebody else? 
if you have red eye, you can't see people's white eye because you're in Israel. If you have stone, Jesus, can I preach? Anything that is in you, you will believe that it is in somebody else. No wonder why Paul said to the pure, all things are pure. Because a person that is pure always says the good things. No wonder why First Corinthians say, love is suffering all things, it open all things. Because the one that has a pure mind is always looking for the good in his brother. Mind says something must be wrong with she or him. When a person don't have the right mind, something is wrong. Because look at it now. Everything that you do, they will find fault. If you come and dress a particular way to church, they say, why make she a show off? But she, because she's just putting herself good together for God. If the man wear a jacket, say, why him wear the jacket and it's not fitting? But he's just wearing it for God. Jesus said me to everything that somebody do, when they're doing it for God, if you have the wrong mindset, you will look at it in the wrong way. Can I say like the psalmist? I'm not telling anybody to say that. I will be myself. Creating me a clean heart, oh God. And renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Nor take thy Holy Spirit from me. But restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Lord created me a clean heart, oh God. Because what the psalmist said, he said, you know, the joy of my salvation said, then will I teach transgressors your ways. So you can't teach somebody something that you don't know. You can't teach somebody something that you're doing. It's unfair to tell me stop sin when you are sinning too. It's unfair to tell me get right when you are wrong. So we need to, to say, Lord, if there's something in me. The song said, Lord Jesus, I love to be perfectly old. I want thee forever to live in my soul. Break down every idol. Cast out everything. Oh, wash me now. Oh God, I feel like I need a washing today. Lord, I thought I was clean, but I feel I need a washing. Oh God, I feel I need a washing today. Because I'm look clean, I'm smell clean, but something in me that needs to come out. Wash me, Lord. Wash me, wash me, wash me. Maybe this message is for me, not you. But wash me, Jesus, wash me. Wash me, Jesus. Because I want to make an hundred. Won't it do? No wonder why when Peter understood it, he said, if the righteous cares to be saved, he said, we're not going to make it with no big margin. You ever watch a raisin and you see the person win, win by them finger. Sometimes they trap over to win. Oh, so we are just going to make it pinch. Bless your Lord. Yes. It's not a big margin. That's why every day I have to be laser focused. Every day I have to do a self introspection. TVJ had a logo and I love it. They say looking in, looking out. Looking even better. So TVJ said, I'm going to look in before I look out. Oh, yes. Some of you, if you will look in before you look out, you will find no fault in anyone else. I have too much.
much to fix than to find fault with somebody. I have so much to fix to, to, to find time to sit down to criticize somebody. There's so much for me to do for me to sit down and play a hanky panky. I'll sit down and play a pass round a donkey with the devil. So TBJ said, looking in, looking out, looking even better. So when they look in, they fix what is wrong. Then they look out now to fix what is that it can be even better. Because Jesus said, why is it that you see the little moat in thy brother's eye? The, the, the moat is the thing that we call matter. It's so small it is. Jesus said, how is it that you see that? And you don't see the beam, which is a big pillar, in your own eyes. You said, thou hypocrite. You just cast it first out of your eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly. Jesus, you notice the word that he used. The word hypocrite means that the person know that something is wrong with them. So I am not preaching to somebody that don't know what is wrong with them. Jesus said to the Holy Ghost, say, you know what is wrong with you. And before you get ready to, to take a little thing out of my eye, you better move the beam out of yours. So, 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 so this boy rose up and the Bible said that the famine took him and sometimes when we come back is when the difficulty takes us because the devil has a way out to make you feel good in sin before he attacks you. So he said he begun to be warm. Look at it now. A child that never knew what hunger was. A child that never knew what sufferation was. Went out and placed himself in a difficult position. And some of you have been in God so long, going on so good. Why is it that you're allowing something else to get your attention? Why is it that, that, that you, you allow things to bring you down? The Bible said he was in want. He is now a child of God. And he said, and he joined himself to a citizen of the country which sent him into his field to feed swine. The word there in the text that said join means that the man was unwilling to receive him. And he, so he forced himself. Uh, yes, oh yes. Many of you end up alone. Um, can I preach this one goes? Many of you end up divorced because you force yourself upon a woman that was unwilling to marry you. Mm, Jesus Christ, if I get in trouble today, God, I'm all right. Sometimes we force ourselves upon a man that was not willing to be with you. And then you end up with this, that, that, that and then you turn around and blame the man when it was nobody's fault for years. You force yourself upon a person. I preached one day and I said to a group of people, you said you are trying with a person. And sometimes you try with things that you see won't work out. Uh, let me understand it. Let me understand it. Oh, you try with something that you see from the get-go will not work out. But you're still trying with it. And, and then now you, you, you said, to the man. Look how long me married. Me, me live together and I married me. The man said, I never wanted to marry you. Yes. No, I never wanted to marry you. You were the one that 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 that, that joined yourself to me. I never want anything to do with you in the first place. All of a sudden, you are preparing to marry the woman and you get a text message. Say, the relationship done. Because we do things that we know won't work out. I don't understand it. It happened to me. I testify and preach 
in the church. And I said, one time I was getting married a woman. I told her my heart, like, like Samson and Delilah. I told her my heart. I love the woman so much. The woman asked me for the radio that I have one single radio. And I give it to her in the name of love. And the woman tricked me with that trick that, 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 that it destroyed me. The woman said, I am pregnant. I know when a woman said to a man, I am pregnant, it gets well big so. So the woman draw the, 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 the trump card, the key card on me. The key card. I am pregnant. I was so elated. I was so happy. But when everything begins to work out now, and, 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 and the revelation start kicking and I realize that the woman was not only pregnant, the woman was not pregnant, but the woman had a boyfriend and also had children before. Uh, the woman begins to drift. Uh, the woman begins, no matter, oh, I'm trying to see the woman, I can't see her. Uh, my other friends saw her, but I never saw her again. Come on. Mm. Because I tried to force myself in something uh, that I know won't work out. Uh, so when, 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 when my heart leave broken, who should I blame? Yourself. So why you don't blame yourself most of the time? So if I should blame myself, why you don't blame yourself most of the time when you do something that you know won't work out, why you blame the man? Why you blame the woman? Why you, why you now blaming God or asking God question that you never asked him before? Why Jesus? Why God? But you, never, you never asked Jesus before. So why are you asking him now? That's the same thing happened to Abraham. He never asked Jesus, never asked God, and he got into a God. So when he was coming to God, God said, listen, you, know, you do what the woman said. Take her up because you put, you put her in, so you take her up. Leave me out of it. So God is straightforward. Let me tell you. God is like a go around the corner, God. He said, if you get yourself in it, you have to bear the consequences. You get yourself in it, bear the consequences. So don't believe that you are going through this because I have not forgiven you, said the Lord. He said, I forgive you, but there are consequences that comes with certain sin. He said, consequences come with some sins. So the Bible said that he forced himself upon a citizen that was not willing to receive him. And he sent him to feed the swine. Did you know that whenever you start rejoicing now, and you have it as a testimony, you said the hardest time I had in my life is when I was with this man. The most difficult time I had in my life, it was when I was with this woman. Because even being an Hebrew, for him to feed swine was against his religion. So you realize that the place that you were before was not of God. So why are you putting God in the picture? Why you never in it the first place? The Bible said in all thy ways, acknowledge and he shall lay it thy palm. That's what the Bible said. But we said, Lord, when I choose what I want, you make it work for me. You don't hear me. The Bible said, in all that we acknowledge him, and he shall lay it thy palm. But we said, me, all of me. Maybe you're not doing it, but me. Sometimes it choose and no one this. And when I get to me, say, Lord, work it out for me. So we make our choice and then we say, God, work it out for me. Amen. And when it not work out, he said, oh, we pray about it and it not work out. No. <laughs> you don't understand what is going on. We choose, then we pray for God, work it out and it not work out. And we say, oh, we pray, oh, it not work out and, and pass a prayer for me and we fast about it. Only do you put yourself in discomfort for something that God wanted. Amen. So he placed 
listening to feed swine because he's going through the difficult period of his time. And the Bible said that when he would feed, fill his belly with the swine us. That he did eat and no man give him anything. So he went into a difficult period of time. He began to eat things that he never ate before. He began to partake in some stuff that he never partaken in before. He began to do things that was not natural. Things that he had never done before he got himself involved. But the Bible says, I don't know if we ever reach a place that you almost lose your mind. You was in a situation that you almost give up. You almost lose everything that you have. But Jesus came and grabbed me and he set me free. The son said, God of mercy kept me. So I wouldn't let go. So when he was there now, when he was there now, it's time to go. Can I say to somebody, it's time to go. You have been wandering too long in the field of sin. The son said, come on, come on. He who are we will come on. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling his children, come on. So he, the Bible said, and, 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 and when he came to himself, notice now the text never said anybody said enough of him. He came to himself. There comes a time in your life where you need to make up your mind. It comes a time in your life that you need to say, I'm not going down without a fight. It comes a time in your life when you have to lay hands on your own self and preach. It comes a time in your life when you have to find a new city for yourself it comes a time in your life when you need to find your own worship it comes a time where you have to say to yourself it's time for me to go forward God has called me to do something and I must go forward in the purpose of God it's time for me to stop finding excuse because Christians have so much excuse for explanation um, you would never understand everything they have excuse for when it comes to God I can't even have to do that I'm, 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 all right, all right. But when it comes to themselves, they will they will walk from Brooklyn to Bronx just for themselves. But when it comes to God, the sun is too hot, the temperature, the time. I, 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 the weather is too cold. I'm not coming to church today. But even the blistering cold, oh yeah, the mighty are going to work, but you're not coming for God. For yourself and for your boss. Anything. So it comes a time where you have to make up your mind. So when the Bible said he came to himself, he was reflecting. And sometimes we need to roll back the curtains of memory. Now and then, show me where you brought me from and where I've got to be. And no wonder why the song said, When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, many of you are not thinking about God's faithfulness. If you would understand, I have to praise him. Mary said, my soul does magnify the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Because he had regarded the low estate of his enemy. Where you were before and where you are now. All of a sudden, you can't worship it. You become Americanized. All right with you. When you were in Jamaica, you jumped and, and broke the heel of the shoes. When you were in Jamaica, yes. you never have a jacket and wear one pants and one shirt, and you were in church. No, you have more than jacket to wear, and you can't come in church. You have more than I eat, and you can't worship. You become so Americanized. I don't know what's wrong with this American church today. You can't worship like before. When you are in Jamaica, you're on fire. But when you come in the snow, you get cold. 
you should have a praise. You should have a worship. Because when you look where you are coming from, what you never had before, and look at what you have now, you have choices before. One time you couldn't go on diet. No, you can't go on diet. Because you couldn't afford it before. And you're not praising God. One time you, 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 you would see and say, I want to go to the hairdresser. You have to walk past it. Now the hairdresser know you by name. And you don't want to praise God. We are not looking at what God is doing for us. We are not looking where we are coming from. Huh? And that's why we can't praise God. Amen. But if you understand that I'm nothing good, but the blood of Jesus ransom me. is the one that paid the price and set me free. That's everywhere I go. I want the world to know. I came to America. Three fourth of our soul. I've never messed up myself because everywhere I go, I want the world to know that the blood of Jesus runs on me. I'm not coming to America to hide my Christianity. I'll go somewhere and hide that I'm a child of God. I want to make it known. Some of you are too sophisticated. Them cute worship them. Too cute for worship. Jesus said, Jesus said, no, that's not for me. That's not for me. We need to be radical. David got vile in worship till his wife said, look at the king today. He said he was before the Lord and he cursed her he will never have a child. So when you're worshiping and people is criticizing you, they're putting themselves in problem. So when in the church I go, I go in my Jamaican worship. In the church I go, I go with my fire praise. And I don't care who wanna watch my worship. I don't care who wanna watch my praise. But I'm going to praise God. If, if, if he do nothing for you, you see. And I'm glad that when I'm praising God, you don't have to say hallelujah and praise God. Because when Jesus anointed me to preach, he never anointed me to preach in amen and hallelujah. I can praise even if you don't say nothing. I don't need people to preach. I preach the wall in Jamaica in my house more than one time. I preach sermons to the wall because God has prepared me. Say, you're gonna go preach to some people that if you're afraid of them fear, say, now go preach. Some of them won't say hallelujah when I give you the word. But it's a preach. Paul said to Timothy, preach the word in season and out of season. Just preach it, preach it. Even if they don't want to hear it, pastor, preach it. Even if they don't have a problem with it, preach it. Even if they don't preach it, preach it. Preach it. Simply preach it. No matter how they feel in the preaching, you preach it. Because they get a chance to preach it. Uh, some pastors say, I can't preach this in my church if the offering now will come in. But Paul said, preach it. Preach the word. That's what is missing in out of a church today. They're preaching what they feel like out of the Bible. And not the Bible. Jesus said, preach it. Preach it. Because this is what will save people. This is what will deliver people. This is what will bless people. And bring them in the kingdom. Preach it. He said, preach it. Preach it. So, so the young man, he's now reflecting. He said, how many of my father I serve him? I'm bread enough to eat and to spear. And I perish with hunger. You know the Lord know how to provide for his people. Hallelujah. 
the Lord knows how to provide for his people. Even when other people are going through a difficult time, God is still providing for you. Even when people say times are here, you, you, you can say God is good and God is great. So when they are complaining about time, you said God is good to me. So even when they're going through a difficult time, God is good. Bible said he begins to reflect now and he begins to understand that I'm not a servant, I'm a child of God. And he said, I will arise and go to my father's house. Do you know that this is your father's house? Do you know that you have a right to praise him in his house? Do you know you have a right to come to his house? Do you know you have a right to worship him? Oh, you want to worship him in his so notice now, even though he was saying that he wants to be a servant, he said, I'm going to my father's house. Look at the contrast. I mean, this would sound contrary, but he understood something. He, 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 he said, I'm going to show my father that I got the right attitude now because I should have the attitude to serve. I should not murmur nor complain if I'm not the main attraction, I think. Why, Jesus, help me now. Because church is not like a stage.